Who else did you expect to see on a warm summer night? This little brown bat, Myotis lucifugus, is out hunting insects, and it can consume more than its own body weight each night. But these high-energy insectivores are not the only organisms out and about on a perfect night like this. So is this nasty character, Pseudogymnoasis destructans. A fungus like P. destructans reproduces by injecting its spores into the air where they will hopefully come into contact with others. But sometimes these spores will find something else first. Sometimes these spores find a bat. Coated in microscopic spores, our brown bat effectively continues its nightly mission, eating, 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 as summer fades to fall. The onset of winter cues our winged mammal to head to its normal roost and abandon mine to wait out the winter by hibernating. This bat will join thousands of others in their communal hibernaculum, their cave. Our bat's destination is the Hibernia Cave Network in northern New Jersey, home to the largest bat hibernaculum in the state. During their winter slumber, these little bats undergo physiological changes which allow them to survive using very little energy. Their heart rates drop significantly, down to 20 beats per minute, while their breathing slows to a sluggish single breath every 48 minutes. With such a metabolism, they can survive in this state of torpor for over seven months. However, they must never be awakened. A single disturbance can deplete up to 60 days of a bat's energy reserves for hibernation. In short, a disturbed bat is a dead bat. And die they do, in the hundreds and thousands due to their enemy, P. destructans. The fungal spores silently invade our bats' bodies as they slumber by capitalizing on their reduced immune responses. P. destructans is an efficient fungus, producing characteristic white noses on affected bats, as well as lesions on their wing membranes. P. destruction certainly lives up to its name. Since 2006, when the infection was first documented, up to 98% of the little brown bat population has been decimated, and the fungus continues to spread throughout North America, now Europe. Unfortunately, these bat deaths ripple throughout the ecosystem. Remember those pesky insects eaten on a midsummer night? Some of them spread diseases like West Nile that can affect both you and me without our friend the bat to keep them in check. Our crops are susceptible as well. Without bats on the scene, insects have free reign over a farmer's field and a farmer's checkbook. Some scientists estimate that the loss of bats to white nose syndrome will also lead to a significant loss for agribusinesses, amounting up to $53 billion. Although rarely seen, our little brown bats are certainly worth saving. But what is in our arsenal to combat this fungus? Fungicide is not our best weapon. Instead, the best option involves sending these bats to the sauna. As white-nosed fungus is psychrophilic or cold-loving, temperatures above 28 degrees Celsius should neutralize it. It may seem silly, but adding space heaters to these cold and damp hibernacula could mean the difference between a stabilized bat population and an extinct species. Models predict that such a treatment could increase our little brown bat's survival rate to 75%. The least we can do for the bats is to stay out of their homes and keep ourselves clean. Humans have spread the fungus between caves without realizing it. In fact, some research suggests that we may have introduced the fungus to bats in the first place. Thus, decontamination protocols are a necessity and a simple way to save the lives of our little friends. A single treatment may be unable to stop P. destructans in its tracks, but it can at least win us some time to find even better ways to help ourselves and our flying friends, the little brown bats.